Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwan and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today is October the 2nd. The leaves are beginning to fall. The stock market has been falling this week with a crisis like always around the world, like ISIS, uh, like the Ukraine, like the Ebola virus in Texas. But we need to focus on business. We need to move business forward. So today, I have three segments for you. Number one, we speak with David Merman Scott. He makes us aware of a brilliant new social media tool that we cannot ignore in sales. Number two, we're going to California and speak with Patricia Fripp. And she's going to tell us on how to handle questions after a speech. Very good advice. And then my friend, Dr. Robert Cialdini, just sent me his new book. And I will share an excerpt a very quick idea that we all can use to take it to the bank. Now, let's go to David Merman Scott. David. Hey, Gerhard. In the last couple of weeks, there's a brand new social network called ELLO that's out, E-L-L-O. It's become really popular really, really quickly. I didn't even hear about it until a week ago, and now I know a whole bunch of people that are on it. It's invitation only, so you have to figure out how to get an invitation. It's in beta right now. Anybody who signs on to ELLO gets five invitations to give out, um, so that's how it's been spreading. Um, I find that ELO is really different and I think might actually take off even further as it grows much more quickly because it does something different. It allows people to communicate in a way without advertising. Some people call it a Facebook killer. I disagree with that. I think the best new social networks like Swarm, like Instagram, and then back in the day like Twitter, when they started, did something very, very different, not because they were trying to do something similar to other people, but better. So take a look at LOC if you can score yourself an invitation. It's worth checking out. Back to you, Gerhard. Thank you, David. So now we are going to uh, Patricia Fripp in California. Hi, Gerhard. Patricia, can you share with us how speakers should handle questions at the end of their speech so as not to interrupt the ending? How do we handle questions in a presentation? Not as your last words. The first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds of your presentation need to be strong type. You start off well, close on a high. Certainly, you are going to take questions if the venue is appropriate. I recommend you say before my closing remarks, what are your short, specific questions based on what you've heard? If the audience is fairly large or does not have a microphone, it is good to repeat the question or at least the essence of the question. One, it will keep you on track and help the audience follow. Then if you have a question that is controversial, take the emotion out of the question and rephrase it. For example is, could be something such as, that's an absolutely ludicrous idea that would not work in our organization. And I could say, Gerhard, obviously you are passionate about the subject. And any new idea does take conversation, collaboration, and discussion. I appreciate that you are open to new ideas and then you focus on somebody else. Questions can be a great way to develop more content. Based on what your audience asks, record the whole session and record their question and answers, and you can add to your repertoire of material on that subject because they are a test audience for any other audience. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Patricia. Now I'd like to share an idea from this book that I just got in the mail today by Dr. Robert Cialdini. He has been very nice and, and signed the book, and the title is The Small Big. Small changes then can spark a big difference. So there's one chapter, chapter 14, and I underlined it. So research conducted by social psychologists suggests that where individuals tend to think about the near future in very concrete terms, they are much more likely to think about events that seem far off in the future 
in more abstract terms. So what does that mean? For example, if you were to ask your coworkers to volunteer for a weekend at a local homeless shelter, their evaluation of their tasks are likely to differ depending on whether you're asking them to help out this upcoming weekend or on a weekend a few months from now. So if you're asking them about the upcoming weekend, they're likely to focus on the concrete costs of what that means to their lives, like uh, to forego um, an event on ESPN or the opportunity to go shopping. How does it apply to sales? So next time you make an appointment with a VIP, don't try to get a meeting like tomorrow or middle of next week, but think in larger time frames and suggest a meeting four weeks from now or five weeks from now. And your chances that you're going to get that meeting on the calendar are much higher. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Thank you very much.